morning everybody, good morning, it's JPR and welcome back to another video. Ever since the beginning of the Pokemon franchise, the sprites of the Pokemon have had an incredibly important role in how the Pokemon are perceived by the players. In fact, I'd argue it's one of the most underappreciated aspects of Pokemon in general. I don't think many people stop and think how they respond to certain sprites or models, but trust me, you do, even if it's completely subconscious. So today, I'll be highlighting some of my personal favorites and least favorites of all the Pokemon sprites and models from Gen 1 through Gen 8. Let's get started. First up in the good category, Arbok. First of all, I just want to say I like all of Arbok's sprites for one reason and one reason only. It reflects the Pokedex entry saying that Arbok have different chest patterns depending on where they live. So in the first four generations, you'll notice that Arbok have slightly different patterns in every game. Gen 1 Arbok is a completely black mouth shape. In Gen 2, the mouth turns red and the eyes are more circular. In Gen 3, fangs are added in the Hoenn games, but Arbok reverts back to its Pokemon Yellow design in Fire Red and Leaf Green. I love it! The next revision comes in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where the slit is removed from the eye pattern, but I gotta deduct points from this one since it doesn't quite line up with the original Johto games. But hey, at least they tried. I'm guessing they didn't revise Arbok in Gen 5 because Arbok isn't native to Unova, although that didn't stop them from doing it in Hoenn. Sadly, from Gen 6 onward though, Arbok has just used these same patterns from Fire Red and Leaf Green, which is a bit disappointing, but if there's one sprite that I want to highlight above the others, it would have to be the Fire Red and Leaf Green version. I don't know, even though Arbok's never been a particularly great or threatening Pokemon, this sprite does do a very good job of conveying its menacing aura. In the other games, Arbok looks kinda goofy in my opinion, but I believe this sprite better than all the others captures what he's actually supposed to be like. From one Gen 1 poison type to another, we have Coughing. Now, there are a lot of bad Gen 1 sprites, and I don't want to fill the whole video with them, but Coughing sticks out like a sore thumb to me because they got his sprite right in Japanese Red and Green, but two years later, they got it wrong in International Red and Blue. Messing up random minor features in other Gen 1 sprites is one thing, but the skull and crossbones is like the standout feature on coughing. How did it randomly get tattooed on his forehead? This is why you should always check your work before submitting it. For the next Pokemon, I'd like to highlight one who took a disappointing turn for the worst, Electros. His Gen 5 sprite is so cool, I'd argue it's one of the best in the game. He jumps and shifts around, he's crackling with electricity, this sprite is so animated and does such a great job of conveying how much energy he has. But I think most would agree that his 3D model from Gen 6 onward is so... Weird. I mean, yeah, he's an eel and he's swimming. This model actually better represents how Electros looks in the anime, too. But man, coming from a Gen 5 sprite, this is so off-putting and devoid of personality. It doesn't really convey a very powerful presence. Electros actually has a far better looking 3D model closer to his Gen 5 appearance in Pokedex 3D Pro, an application released on the 3DS in 2012. Actually, there are a lot of models that look better in this app, but Electros is the most notable. Now hang on, hang on, I don't want this video to just be a parade bashing on 3D models, so let's focus on some of the really good ones. Rotom is one of those Pokemon whose eccentric nature they captured very well. And it's not even base Rotom, it's all of the different forms. Plus, whenever they attack, almost all of them have some sort of moving compartment that drives home their appliance theme. I think Rotom in general is just one of those Pokemon that was always meant to be viewed in 3D. Up next is Genesect. Now, you won't see it here in this idle animation, but one of my favorite things is how it unfolds from its disc-like shape when you send it out of its Pokeball. This is actually a reference to its high-speed flight form, which is only ever seen in the episode and Japanese anime opening, as well as the 16th movie Genesect in The Legend Awakened. I watched it so that you didn't have to! It's very neat to see something that originated as an anime exclusive form be integrated into the games, even if it is just a split-second transformation. Well done. Magirna also does a similar transformation when it's sent into battle, coming out of its Pokeball-like shell. Magirna also retreats into its ball in Pokemon Refresh and Pokemon Camp whenever it sleeps or when petting it. It will also try to high-five you using the flowers in its hands from its signature move, Fleur Cannon. These may not be battle animations, but I think it's kind of cool that Magirna is basically designed as a toy to play with in these modes, especially since it's a Pokemon that was intended to be played with by the King's Daughter. Getting back to sprites for a moment though, Gen 3 has a few strange ones. Let's start with a good one, Hitmonlee. In Ruby and Sapphire, Hitmonlee strikes this epic kicking pose unlike any of his other ones. He looks like he's about to come flying through my window right now! Ah, 
well, okay, that aside, it's still a cool pose. It even gets this neat little animation added to it in Pokemon Emerald, too. But it's such a shame, you'll only ever see this sprite if you play in the Battle Frontier, or if you Link Battle one of your friends who has Fire Red and Leaf Green. It's such an awesome sprite that sadly never saw much action. I'm willing to bet many of you probably never even saw this sprite before today. Shifting to Hitmonlee's punching counterpart, Hitmonchan, this is another particularly strange Gen 1 sprite, being its original one from Japanese Red and Green. I mean, I understand the thought process about emphasizing that it's the punching Pokemon and the boxers commonly keep their fists in front of their faces, but without any artwork or supplemental material, how was anyone supposed to figure out what this was? Of course, more modern audiences have hilariously likened it to a Togekiss hiding behind a Doduo, which, I can't lie, looks more accurate than it does to a modern day Hitmonchan. Another strange looking Ruby and Sapphire sprite is Kingler. Now, looking at it just like this, it appears absolutely fine. In fact, pretty cool even. Now, I couldn't find any footage of this online because, like Hitmonlee, battling a Kingler and Hoenn is an extremely rare phenomenon, but basically, given that the Gen 3 battlefield is shaped like a pancake, this Kingler sprite just kind of pseudo-levitates or is balancing itself on those stubby little legs. I think they realized how bizarre this looked too because ever since then they went back to drawing Kingler from the same angle that they always have. Interestingly, they decide to experiment on a few of the Pokemon that missed the ship to Hoenn, drawing them with funky looking poses and angles, Ivysaur and Zapdos being some notable examples. I get it, they were trying to do something new since not a lot of people would notice, but man, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. But as strange as those Pokemon look, they aren't disturbing. This is disturbing for alligators packed back and butt. Good lord, who is the Japanese guy that drew a butt on this poor alligator? Now I know, the Gen 6 model has since clarified that this is meant to be like the ridges on the back of an alligator, but guys, perspective is everything. If I don't see his entire back, I'm just gonna think it's a butt. My seven-year-old mind didn't know any better, and yours probably didn't either. On that note, I need a small break from sprites. Let's talk about one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to the 3D models, flying Pokemon. In Gen 6, one of the new features that they absolutely had to add, for some reason, was Sky Battles. But only Pokemon who levitated or flew in their 3D models could actually participate. Why they didn't just make separate animations for being flying and grounded, I'll never know, but needless to say, a lot of the Pokemon just don't look good in the air. I always loved the prideful, stoic look of Swellow on the ground. It's one of the reasons I found his black and white sprite to be a big step up from his 4th Gen 1. But ever since 2013, Swellow has been suspended in the air in this incredible incredibly stupid looking gliding quote unquote animation. This is an extremely rare case of a favorite Pokemon of mine I just stopped using because I couldn't stand the look of the model. Other Pokemon like Tropius and Skarmory who also looked really cool on the ground have suffered the exact same fate. Even the legend himself, Charizard, I would argue looked far better on the ground than he does in the air. At the very least they recognized the Halucha would have looked incredibly stupid if he were suspended in midair so for the better of mankind he was left on the ground. But still, it's been nearly eight years since sky battles were a thing. I don't get why we still have to deal with these goofy looking things. But once again, to avoid being a Debbie Downer, let's talk about some of the cooler flying animations. I know I just mentioned Charizard, but both of his Mega Evolutions actually look really cool in midair. Yes, even Megazard X, who just kind of glides in place similarly to Swellow and Tropius. Though I'd say it's most because his whole body appears much more animated. Eveltal's model is another one that looks really good in motion. The slow, menacing flap of his wings says all it needs to about this embodiment of death and destruction. The model itself just generally looks really good too, it's one of the more intricate designs that they pulled off really well. At the very least I'd say X and Y knew which models the most people would be looking at and made sure that those looked pretty good. Another newer Pokemon that takes full advantage of its 3D model is Phalanx. At first glimpse you'd think it was a caterpillar moving across the route, but then the battle starts and you're like, whoa, I'm getting jumped! It's just one of those Pokemon that wouldn't have the same effect if it were in sprite form. Your understanding of the Pokemon completely shifts when you see it in action. The horn on the leader actually grows when it uses physical attacks, and the little face shields disengage Pokemon camp and in some attack animations. I know this has little to do with the model, but I loved the animation of their signature move, No Retreat. Particularly how they dart so quickly in and out of line, portraying the serious nature of this Pokemon. G-Max Toxtricity is another personal favorite of mine. Just look at this bad boy. While most Celestial Pokemon have sadly had their effects turned down a bit in the 3D era, Toxtricity turns it up to 11 with the flashing blue and yellow currents, and I'm not sure if you can see it on this, but there's even sparks constantly flying around its body. 
This has that chaotic electric energy that I love to see, and it's made even better by the fact that he forms a literal electric guitar to hit his opponents with. If that is not the coolest tech animation I've ever seen, I don't know what is. Honestly, I would just put most of the GMAX models on here because they all are quite impressive one way or another, but this one's just my personal favorite. But while most of the newer Pokemon make really good use of their 3D models, some older ones just miss the mark completely. Yeah, you knew this one was coming, Typhlosion. What a shame, Typhlosion went from one of the fiercest and fiery looking Pokemon to a complete dope. What is this blank look on his face? Typhlosion isn't supposed to look calm. His name literally comes from Typhoon and Explosion. Someone over in Japan needs to open up a dictionary. I know his Japanese name is actually Bakfoon, but that's basically the same thing. Yeah, I know he still uses the flames whenever he attacks, but when he's just standing there idly, he has to be the most boring looking Pokemon in the game. The flame color is the defining feature on this Pokemon. Why use it so sparingly? I don't know, man. This whole evolution line in 3D just looks cursed. Another Pokemon that looks super strange to me in 3D is Mewtwo. I don't know what it is, but I just don't like it. The pose is boring and his body proportions just look so far off the mark. Normally I'd say the 3D models at the very least do an excellent job at nailing that, but someone did not get this right. He just looks too stocky and his whole head is shaped oddly. I think it's mostly in the eyes though. His irises are too small and he lacks that iconic Mewtwo scowl. He doesn't even look angry, he just looks like me when I step into a puddle with my Crocs. Compare this to Smash Ultimate Mewtwo. Oh man, now that is a face. It's sharp, angular, angry, and the irises are the right size. This is the Mewtwo that I remember. An older Pokemon that does look good in 3D though has to be Pseudo Wudo. I love how he stands there completely motionless pretending to be a tree. A rare example of the classic phrase, less is more. It's somewhat similar to his Pokemon Crystal Sprite where he tries his very best to remain still and undetected but can't help swaying his lower half. The nervous expression on his face completely sells this one. Another Pokemon whose sprite and model like to highlight is Pharaoh Seed. The Gen 5 sprite is so funny to me, it's nothing too amazing, but he just starts spinning really fast for the heck of it. His 3D model is mostly still, similar to Pseudo Wudo, but it's actually because more often than not he's partially burrowed into the ground. What I like most is his attack animations though, since he does both the Gen 5 crazy spin and shoots off all of his spikes to perform special attacks, which is an ability that was described in the Pokedex and is only ever seen in action in a very obscure Best Wishes anime episode. Similar to Genesect is one of those attention to detail things that I really appreciate. And lastly, Scraggy. He drops his pants. Get funny. Finally, to end off this video, I asked you guys on Twitter to send me some of your favorite sprites and models, so I'll be going over a few community submissions. My buddy John here sent Shiny Necrozma Dawn Wings. Now what makes this one so neat is that in the shiny form you can tell that Necrozma is absorbing the light of Solgaleo and Lunala. It's a bit more vague in the non-shiny versions, but since Shiny Solgaleo and Shiny Lunala are those bold, vibrant red colors, the soft pink shows off much better how they're being contained and fed off of. I quite like this one. Tony sent in High Dragon Sprites and then added, won't let me post the gif, frowny face, so I'll throw it out there. Yeah, this is another really good one. Between how the heads constantly move and bite and the wings too, it's very animated like Electros, very good submission. Lumius Trainer Zack sent in Lugia, I believe that's a sprite from Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Man, that is one heck of a T-pose if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Jokes aside though, it looks kind of like he's about to perform a dive, which fits because he's Lugia. Good pose, I like it. Yep, we got an Electros submission here. Already talked about him earlier in the video, but you know, he's so good, let's just look at him a second time. Black Glue Rock X sent in White Curum, but added that the whole trio of them looked cool in Gen 5, especially with Zekrom and Reshiram's fire and electric effects, which were sadly taken away in the 3D models. I'm with you, buddy. Those blue and red glows that would pop up on Zekrom and Reshiram were sick. I miss those a lot. And plus, look how complex this sprite is, and Black Curum too. I'll throw him out there. Someone had to draw and animate dozens of frames of this. Couldn't have been easy. This is definitely one of the more complex Pokemon designs. This is like the granddaddy of sprites that went hard. Shotgun Raptor Jesus, great username by the way, sent in this handsome boy, Golurk's Gen 5 Sprite. Another personal favorite of mine, I like how you can see the individual moving compartments. It really drives home the idea that this is like a possessed golem or suit of armor. And plus the little seal on his chest even wiggles around, which is containing Golurk's true power. A very appreciated detail. Anyhow, there were a lot more submissions, but I just wanted to highlight a handful. If you're curious about that, you can follow me on Twitter, link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and help us out on the road to 100k subscribers. Like the video and leave a comment down below telling me who your favorite and least favorite sprites and models are. That's it for me. I'll see you guys next time.